Hello everyone, welcome to Homework Help. If you find the videos useful, please subscribe to the channel. So in this video, we'll solve this problem using the concept of vectors as forces. So as per the problem, a force F1 of magnitude 6 Newton acts on particle P. A second force F2 of magnitude 8 newtons acts at 60 degrees to F1. Determine the result in an equilibrium of F1 and F2. So we are given two force vectors F1 and F2. So the first step is to draw a diagram for this problem. So we'll start by showing the particle P. And there is a force F1 acting on this particle P of magnitude 6 newtons. So we are not given the direction for F1. So let's assume it's acting in the horizontal direction. So this is vector F1. Now second force F2 of magnitude 8 newtons acts at 60 degrees to F1. Now since the magnitude of F2 is greater than that of F1, so the vector F2 should be longer than vector F1. So this can be vector F2. Now the angle between these two vectors is 60 degrees. And we have to find the resultant and equilibrium of these two forces. So the first step is to use the parallelogram method to show the resultant for these two forces. So at the head of uh, force F1, we should draw a vector parallel to F2 to complete the parallelogram. So this is vector F2 and now we can complete the parallelogram by drawing a vector parallel to F1. So this is vector F1. Now in this parallelogram, the resultant is represented by the longer diagonal of this parallelogram. So we can draw it like this. So this uh, diagonal represents the resultant of F1 and F2. So let's assume it's vector R. Now in a parallelogram, adjacent angles are supplementary angles. That means the adjacent angles should add up to 180 degrees. So therefore, the measure of this red angle here is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, which is equal to 120 degrees. So there's a very important concept we need to understand and memorize to solve this type of problem. Now, we can use the cosine law equation to find the magnitude of the resultant or the length of the diagonal. So for that, we'll have to start the cosine law equation with the magnitude of the diagonal or the magnitude of R because we know the angle 120 degrees which is opposite to this uh, diagonal of the parallelogram. So as per the cosine law equation, Now the magnitude of F1 is given as 6 and the magnitude of F2 is 8. So this is the equation we get to uh, by using the cosine law for the triangle made by 
your vector f1, vector f2, and their resultant. Now we have to evaluate this expression. So 6 squared is equal to 36. 8 squared is 64 and 36 plus 64 is 100 and then negative 2 times 6 times 8 times cos of 120 is equal to positive 48. Now we can apply square root to both sides. And I got almost 12.2. And the unit is Newton. <clears throat> so this is the magnitude of the resultant. Next, we have to find the direction of this resultant. And for that, we should find the measure of this blue angle in the triangle made by F1, F2 and the resultant. And for that, we need to use co uh, sine law equation. So as per the sine law equation, so let's assume that angle is theta. So we're using magnitude of F2 because side that represents vector F2 is opposite to that angle theta in the triangle. And 120 degree angle is opposite to the side that represents the resultant. So now we can sub in the values for the magnitude. Now we can isolate sine theta by cross multiplying the denominator 8. Now we can evaluate this expression. 8 times sine 120 divided by 12.2 and I got uh, 0 0.5679. Now we can do the inverse of sine. So I got almost 34.6 degrees. So that's the value of angle theta. So the resultant of these forces is, so when we write the resultant, which is a vector, we should ma uh, mention the magnitude and the direction of the resultant. So the magnitude is 12.2 Newtons. And the direction is this angle theta, which can be described as 34.6 degrees from F1 towards F2. From vector F1. Towards vector f2. So let me explain it to you. So as you can see, the uh, resultant is represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram and it's in between forces f1 and f2 acting on particle p. So that's why the direction is uh, the angle from f1 towards f2.
So there is a very important concept we need to understand and memorize. Now we can find the equilibrant of forces F1 and F2. So first we can show the equilibrant in our parallelogram diagram. So equilibrant can be shown like this. So let's assume it's vector E. So equilibrant vector is equal and opposite to the resultant vector. So there's a very important concept we need to understand and memorize. So as, as a result, the magnitude of the equilibrant is equal to the magnitude of the resultant vector. Now we have to find the direction of the equilibrant vector. So the first step is to find the measure of angle, this black angle. So for that, we'll have to subtract the angle theta from 180 degrees. So we can show our calculation here. So 180 degrees minus 34.6 is equal to 145.4 degrees. So that means the equilibrant makes an angle of 145.4 degrees with F1 and is away from F2 because it's going in the opposite direction from that of the resultant. So our direction for equilibrant will be from vector F1 and away from vector F2. So there's a very important concept we need to understand and memorize about equilibrium vectors and how we can find them from the resultant vector. So I hope you'll find this video useful. Please share it, like it and subscribe to Homework Help. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye.